All right, so let's say we've talked about the basics and intermediate and a touch of advanced on WordPress, and we've got a theme and we've got products, and it lo all looks really nice. Um, I've got my shop and all of that, and I've got products for sale and everything. But we need to talk about some extra things now beyond it, because we've got this site, we've got this project that exists only on your computer. We want to get it out to the real world. Let's now talk about the concepts of moving out to the real world, getting your site visible by everyone. Right now, the only people that can look at your site have to be sitting at your computer. I want to have my own victor.com and such. So let's talk a little bit first. You need two things. You need a domain name, also known as a URL, you know, the address, web address. You need the domain name and you need hosting, which is the server, you know, the hard drive space. For us, we've got this virtual server, WAMP. You put it into the WW folder and it's a website, but you can only use it from this one computer. You need to get this and both of these come from, I just call them generically the provider. I guess we can call them the ISP and such, but technically that might not quite be the right term. I call it the provider because you can then get the domain name and the hosting. And technically you can get them from separate companies. Let me make some better notes over here and I'll put these notes in the folder. You need two things for a real website. Domain name and hosting. You get them from either the same provider or different providers. That's fine. Sometimes you get a better deal buying domain name from one place and hosting from another. I recommend you keep them both on the same company because then you only have to deal with one set of tech support, one bill, one place where things can go wrong. Um, the, all the big companies nowadays, they sell you both, and uh, especially now that we've got a, um, so highly recommended, especially now that we've got e-commerce capabilities and such, SSL. Again, you get that from your provider. You can get all three of those from one provider some names off the top of my head of companies that my company has worked with are godaddy.com, bluehost.com, hostmonster.com, and those are the big ones that we've worked with and we've had good results and there's plenty more out there of course. Um, does anyone know of anyone that maybe I haven't mentioned here? Hostgator. Hostgator, yeah. That's, a, that's one. That's a, that's a pretty big one, famous one. We, we haven't used that one very much. Any, any other ones that people can vouch for? One and one. One and one. One and one dot com. One and one dot com. So there's plenty of them out there. And they're all in competition with each other, and they're all trying to get your business. So you have to check what do they provide, what's their tech support like, what are their features like, and all of that stuff. The three that I mentioned on top here, we've worked with and they've all been good. Sometimes you get bad luck. I've had a client, one for I guess 15 years now, she was on GoDaddy for a long time. She had a very trafficked website and for whatever reason her bad luck was that she was always getting a lot of slowdowns on her site she would upgrade the services and it would still not work so well eventually she got fed up she went with Bluehost like five years ago maybe and she's been fine with Bluehost and vice versa I've, I've known people that have been on one company and it worked okay and other people that have been on the same company and it doesn't work out sometimes I don't know why it's random it's luck I don't know but really you also get what you pay for 
because all of these are going to offer you various tiers and they're going to call them a bunch of different names but I'm basically going to say you know basic intermediate and advanced levels and each one are going to be various levels of cost the more you pay for this the basic level will give you this amount of hard drive space and this speed and all of that the intermediate one a little bit more expensive will cost you more but it'll work better if you've got a lot of traffic or a lot of files and an advanced level to further add to the confusion we've got oftentimes what is known as shared hosting Then we've got VPS hosting, shared hosting. Within the within shared and within VPS, we often have the basic intermediate advanced as well. And so shared hosting is basically uh, your site is on a server with many other sites. It's like in our WAMP folder, WW folder, we have a site called John, and a site called Bill, and a site called Janet. And each one of those folders is a complete website, all using the same resources of this one computer. Those three websites are all using the same hard drive and RAM and all of that of this computer. That's also for GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostGator, etc. They have a computer. They have a computer set aside. And inside of that, they cram a bunch of websites into it. Cram is obviously a very, you know, subjective word that I said, but they put all of those other people and <coughs> yours on the same computer using the same RAM, the same hard drive. The more you pay, the more yours works better in that environment, pretty much. VPS, virtual private system, I think, virtual private service. It's basically that now you have your own server, basically. You have your own server. It's a virtual server still. There's a technical definition of that. But now you your resources are more for you. You're not sharing that same RAM with other websites. Those other websites are not slowing down your website, possibly. So this is a bit more of a, uh, you know, it stands for virtual private hosting. Um, Private, technically private cloud hosting. All of these nuances, really it all comes down to how much can you afford. Because then within VPS, you can then get many, many levels of basic, intermediate, advanced service. The highest level actually then is we've got dedicated hosting. So within just shared hosting, that's the affordable one even if you get the advanced expensive one that's still all of that is all of shared is affordable and then the next level that becomes the less affordable and then the dedicated it becomes the welcome google sign in because that level dedicated that's super expensive that's like five hundred dollars a month Whereas the prices over here of shared hosting, that's like $500 for 10 years. But it's because it's a level that is shared and you have to decide your budget and all of that. And oftentimes in the real world, I can tell you most of the time we have our clients on shared. Most of the time our clients are not these huge companies that need a huge amount of RAM and dedicated capabilities. Most of the time we're dealing with shared but at least we're usually on intermediate because then it's better service of the basic service. Prices vary a lot. This could be $3 a month, $10 a month, $15 a month. Still way better than $500 a month. And I'm not kidding about that. It does get that expensive when you've got a dedicated server. That's literally that at the provider, they've got a computer right there and it's all yours. Question? Those are a little bit more in the realm of VPS. They they have different tiers and such, but then uh, it's all in the cloud. And they separate it per <coughs> client, so it leans more toward that, depending on the provider. 
Yes. Uh, SSL. Well, that's that security. Remember when you go to some websites and you see uh, a lock in the address bar? That's security. So when you go to a bank, when you go to a bank, I want to see that the bank is secure, so that's going to be that lock. And that lock up there is SSL. So, funny thing, there's no lock on Bank of America. But um, that's SSL, that's the security. Just basically secure line. Well, that's what we've talked about on a previous day, that that encrypts your traffic when someone visits your site because they're giving valuable information, like personal information and credit cards. So SSL gets in the way and encrypts the traffic and puts the lock up in the corner and verifies your site. Yes? These web hosting companies, they never tell you you're getting shared hosting, do they? They always like say you're getting unlimited bandwidth. Yeah, and sometimes sometimes the terminology isn't so obvious. Uh, I would poke around in the in the you know the deeper details. Um, and then you can always call them too. All of these companies have this phone number, call them 24 hours a day and get the get the info. But usually, if it's going to be a really affordable price, like, you know, $5 a month, I'm already telling you right here, you're in the lowest level. Not that it's the bad, not, a, not that it's the worst. Even if you go for the basic shared one, if you've got a basic site, that might be enough. But if you've got a shopping cart with a lot of products, and you have to download videos, and you have to have a lot of people logging in and all of that, basic might be too basic. You might go with intermediate shared. Let's say you're getting really rich and famous off your site, Get lots of traffic, you might then start to move into the basic VPS. It's going to be three times more expensive, but hopefully you're recuperating that. And then one day when you become the next Facebook, you can have your own dedicated host. So these providers have all of these different levels of service. And part of the challenge is to get a name. So I'm going to show you this great website. Go check out domainhole.com that's whole like in the ground not whole like in total domainhole.com h o l e this is a website that helps you find a name all of this all of the providers help you do that but i like this one because it can help you find names that perhaps are not claimed yet, because that's what often happens with this. I have this great idea for this name, picturesbakery.com. Someone bought it five years ago, ten years ago. So with something like Domain Hole, this can help you find an interesting name with, uh, with keywords. For example, Domain Hole, we've got expired search, name spinner, instant check, complete check, etc expired search. Thank you. You're welcome. You buy these things, you know, one year at a time, five years, ten years, whatever. You buy these domain names in your service for a long time, but sometimes people only buy it one year at a time, they forgot to pay it and renew it, maybe the credit card expired, so these get taken back. You're basically renting a piece of the internet. You don't actually own it. As long as you keep renting it, you've got a piece of the internet. But if it does run out, they take it away from you, and someone else can take it. So here, if you go to the expired search and you say, well, search domains that contain this keyword expiring in the next seven days with these domain names here. So let's say what's coming up with cookie. Find me domain names that are going to expire that have the word cookie in, in the title. None are going to expire at the moment. Let me see in the next uh, or the last 60 days. Actually, not going to, but have expired, sorry, in the past. So you can go through the expired search, what, do, what domain names have expired, maybe I can get one. You can go to the name spinner. Let's say I'm going to put in a keyword of cookie. 
and I can tweak it, put that, put that keyword at the end of my name and put a dot com and all of that and choose from a list of popular Priya pens or let's say is there anything here regarding food, animals, common things, technology? Let's say look in cookie, common terms, or technology terms. All of these are taken at the moment, but notice what, th what this would tell you is it would give you possible domain names. Instant check. Uh, type a name, complete check, name generator. Okay, this one's interesting. Name generator. This is more for like companies that you're trying to build an online presence, but you, you might not even have a name yet. So with this name generator, I'm going to say, for example, give me some domain name with eight characters with a dot com at the end, and it will give you these unique not really gibberish names, but interesting, weird web 2.0 names. Like before you before you really knew about it, what's a Facebook.com? What's a Twitter.com? What's a Flickr? What's, you know, Behance, Dribble, Fiverr? What are these things? What's a Tinder, etc., etc.? You don't know what they are at the moment, but you know about them eventually. So these names, you know, are kind of randomish names. And so if you do this name generator, it says these random domain, domain names are often referred to as Web 2.0 names and are unique and trademarkable. The tool will generate random, pronunciable domain names. Now, a bunch of them are taken, but it could be something interesting as well there. So domain hall, you can go to the brainstormer and get ideas here also for different names. And if there is a name available, you can then click to... it'll then take you back to GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, and you can actually buy it. If you go directly to these companies, I'm going to look at GoDaddy.com. You can do searching here as well. And this gives you suggestions. All of these companies do this to a different degree. I'm just going to go to GoDaddy. And let's say I want, at the very top here, find your perfect domain name. I want um, victorsbakery.com. I just got the idea. And it tells me here, sorry, it's taken. But victorsbakery.net is not. Cost $11. Victorsbakery.org is available. .co, .info. All of these brand new ones that have just come out. Dot menu, dot equipment, dot Vegas, dot cafe. That'd be perfect for my bakery because I'm a bakery and cafe. Victor'sArt.com, uh, $2,000. Some of these names are available, but they're super expensive because they're, they're known as premium domains with common words. There's not much of a relationship between that name and the other name of the same bank. No. They're kind of promoting it, but sometimes it, it is on the mark and it, it does make sense to, to, to get the do. It could be. It could be, but I'll tell you about another scam in a moment. <laughs> .us is available. Now, notice these prices. Oftentimes, this is an introductory one-year price. I can get victorsbakery.us for $1 next year. It'll be $19.00 and the next year after that $19. This $2,000 one is $2,000 first year. Then after that it goes back to a more reasonable price of $15. That's at least one good thing about that. Victor's Bakery Kitchen, perfect, $39. Okay, it's a little more expensive. But the point of this is you're not limited to dot-coms. There's a bunch of new names that have been, that have been released and many more that are coming out. Here's the problem though. The dot com is ingrained in us so much for 26 years. The web websites have existed for 26, 27 years. It's so ingrained that every website's dot com. So that's a little hard to break out of. 
No one knows this. How many of you before today knew that there was a that there was a website dot dog <laughs> dot club dot kitchen dot arrow dot ninja? One just came out that's dot xyz. No one knows these things. So that's one thing you're kind of pushing against. Everyone's going to assume victorsbakery.com, right? And they go to my competitor. No, it's victorsbakery.xyz. Okay. So in the SEO class, I talk about that a name doesn't matter. Any name, as long as you optimize it and do SEO, will get traffic, will get found, will get sales. Any name. The problem is that these new names here, they're not in our consciousness yet. But with SEO and such, as we get, become active on social media, as we blog, as we create content and get out there, as we do old media stuff, as we give people our business card and our flyer and our billboard with that dot kitchen and build a reputation for it, then that's negated. It's negated that this name, no one knows dot kitchen. But as I put myself out there and make myself more famous through SEO, it doesn't matter that I chose a weird name. Any name will work. And I recommend to not try to go for names like Victor's Bakery is taken. Okay, I'm going to go with the original Victor's Bakery SD. I'm not going to go with those. I don't recommend these huge names here. That is starting to look like a spammer. If you take the SEO class, I talk in there that the opposite is when you want to get your perfect name, .com. If I'm saying .coms are so ingrained in us that you're going to think, okay, then I have to get a .com. So I have to get a huge name. Don't do that. Spammers do that. You see a bunch of terrible websites out there with these huge names. CheapCanadianMeds.com, AffordableRealRolexWatches.com. They're not real. So I would not recommend <coughs> beating yourself up to get a huge domain name. Get a nice short memorable one, dot whatever, and then via SEO, social media, blogging, etc., you make a you get traffic for it, you make a name for yourself, you get your sales. There's a bunch of them. Dot equipment dot ws dot guru dot photography. I wish they would have called that dot photo. There is photo? Yeah, there's photo photography and photography birds, I think. Oh, okay. But I don't know anybody's more other than This is the one that I was going to say. This is the scam. This is the scam about all of these domain names now. But. Has them. Exactly. Not every provider has all of them, unfortunately. That's part of the scam that they were going to open up so many more new domain names for people, but they're rolling them out in phases and they're letting the big companies choose first. And not every company can let you buy every domain name. I want the tips, but I want to buy it at HostMonster. They might not have it. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is something that has happened for us as 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 a company. This is what. What has happened to us before? We were we've been with a client, and we've been trying to figure out their domain name, and they had a certain name, you know, John's Jelly Beans, John's Jellies .com. And when we searched it, it was available. Then the owner said, "Okay, let me wait until payday this Friday. Then we'll buy it on Friday." Friday came along. We went back on GoDaddy. No longer available. I have to be very cynical and say that's happened to us twice. To you too. Yeah. And suddenly it's gone. One possible way to protect against that is in, add it to your cart. Even if you're not going to buy that name, whatever you see and look at, add it to your cart. And it should protect it for a little while at least. And if you're able to buy it, buy it as soon as possible. Unfortunately, it's like as soon as you start searching, I have to be paranoid and say these companies, not just GoDaddy, they all they're seeing interest in a name and it's been way too convenient that it's happened in the real world for me my clients that a name has disappeared right under our noses so um, 
you know, we can call them and complain, and I'm sure they'll say, oh, that was someone bought it before you, and, you know, we don't have much recourse, unfortunately. So think of your name, a few ideas, search them, and if you find interesting ones, add them to your cart, and then try to buy them as soon as possible. You don't have to, you don't have to set up the site right away, at least get that name. And remember what you need to get here is a domain name and hosting. So you don't have to get the hosting and domain name at the same time. Buy a few domain names. Buy those $1 domain names and hold on to them and then decide this is the one I'm going to use. Then further go in and buy the, the rest of your things. You don't have to buy your SSL and your hosting and your domain at the same time. That'll, you know, maybe be a $200 outlay right now. Maybe just spend, you know, $20, 30 $50 on buying some domain names. And then as you develop your site, you want to get it online, then go in and get the, the extra stuff, the ancillary stuff. Yes? Um, so when you go to GoDaddy, for instance, should you select web hosting or WordPress hosting? That's one of the things that's confusing under GoDaddy. Uh, Bluehost has a version of it, but you want to get the regular web hosting, not the dedicated WordPress hosting. That one is kind of a little bit of training wheels. If you get the WordPress hosting, it might give you what you want. And I don't, you know, everyone is a little different. But in our experience, the plain old web hosting has worked the best because it has more features. For a lot of you, maybe the WordPress kind of hosting will work just fine. Here's a real world example. Over at Southwestern College, uh, there's the computer information systems department and I was charged with updating their website so they have that department then they had a club web they had students that were in a club in that department that would do websites they wanted me to make them a website well with the account that they had bought it was the web it was the WordPress version so you could not add more websites to the main website you only had that one website with web hosting, you can make multiple folders, multiple directories, and put each different WordPress site into its own folder on the main site. You can't do that with the managed WordPress one, because it assumes you're going to have one website, one WordPress, this is all you get, this is all you need. In our particular case, we needed multiple websites on one domain, and we were not able to do it until we changed the service for free. We changed it over to the plain web hosting. Uh, over at Bluehost, I'm sure they've got a version of it too. So just read the fine print and you want the most basic full featured account, not the one that is just focused on WordPress. Question? So the permalinks that come up, like I have a WordPress, uh, I got a WordPress hosting site off of uh, the WordPress. Uh, but the permalinks are often not there Like mask them? Uh, that might be a hard answer, uh, hard answer for me to give you because there must be a reason why their domain name is still in your permalinks, most likely because of the, of the kind of account you bought. Because it should be that if you buy it the proper way, any of your permalinks should only have your domain, not the provider's name. So I would check with tech support before trying to do anything. Get on tech support and say, why do my links still have your address? I thought I paid for this to have my address. So, so check with them. So the big problem, the big question is, well, okay, I need a provider. How do I get my site on there? That is basically that whole process of, of that I've got in the handouts that resurrect every time we've been in in here and we resurrect our site from last week that's what we would do with Bluehost with GoDaddy with HostMonster whatever we would follow these instructions basically uh, to bring the site back it does miss a lot of detail because I can't give the detail of every provider I can't say do it like this for GoDaddy and you don't have GoDaddy I can't say, okay, do it like this for Bluehost, but you don't have Bluehost. So here I have it in the most generic way. 
That's why it says log into phemyadmin, create a database. You have to create a database somehow on Bluehost, on HostMonster, on GoDaddy, whatever. You have to create a database. You then have to upload your your archive files to your .com or .net or .guru, whatever. You have to figure out how to do that, how to upload files into your server. And then once you've done those two, then you go through the installer, which we've done over and over and over, and after that it works. There is a lot of, you know, this should have an asterisk with a whole paragraph of instructions. And this one would have a paragraph with instructions for your particular provider. I can't teach that that specifically. But the concept is all here. It's, it's a variation of what we've been doing over and over in class. That's why when you get these providers, you're also paying for the tech support. And most of these nowadays are 24-hour tech support, and they'll sit with you as long as you need to figure it out. And I've had to call them. You know, I've had 15 years' experience in this, and I, and I call them too to figure some things out that are really deep-level stuff, and they get it done. So don't be afraid to call up the tech support and, and have them help you with it. That's what they're there for. That's what you're paying for. As we're getting to the end of the day, well, we've, you know, looking at everything in, the, in total, we started with if you had no experience in WordPress, you have much more. There's still much more to learn, honestly. That's why I have that book in the syllabus, recommended book in the syllabus. That's why you can get help from your providers. You can go get tutorials from YouTube. If you really want to get advanced, you can go over to lynda.com, and they've got, another, they've got many, many more great tutorials, but this is a service. This is a, uh, a uh, subscription-based company, and I think it's like $300 a year. It's a big amount of money for tutorials, but these are some of the best in the business. And so, we also offer other WordPress classes on this campus. Other instructors teach WordPress here. Maybe check theirs out and get opinions from other points of view. Take this class again if you want. I'm offering it every few months. It starts again, part one, part two. You're welcome to come in on day three of part one. No problem. Come back and take it again. It's free classes. Victor, yes. Are we going to uh, set up like WAMP or MAMP on our home computer or laptop? Does it need to be configured the way you've got it? I mean, does it need to be a WAMP folder with a www folder inside it? It does it automatically. It does. Short answer, yes. And it does it automatically. Whenever you install these things, it'll make these folders for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, any general questions as we wrap up the main lecture? Yes, very good point. Let me go back here. A plugin that I would recommend for Google Analytics is called Yoast Google Analytics. Well, let me write it here as soon as it loads up. Y O A S T, Yoast Google Analytics. I really like that one to incorporate my Google Analytics with my websites. Oh, yes. Very good point. See, that's why we need one more day, but next week is spring break. This other one um, to manage permalinks is called redirection. So it's the one right here. Redirection. That one helps you manage permalinks, set up 301 redirectors so that your broken links are no longer broken links. I use it all the time, very well rated. It is due for an update, but I do use it all the time and I can vouch for it. How about um, automatic tools for testing your website, running it through like a plugin or anything outside of WordPress? Like, testing how? Um, it depends on what's available. I'm pretty sure you can get anything like you know, use or do. That's a kind of, a, of instead of manually what? Instead of manually verifying the website, do you use or recommend any tools that 
No, I don't have one because we usually do it manually. So, yeah, just to make sure it all works. Cause I don't, I don't quite feel that there's the perfect plugin out there that can handle all, all possibilities, and therefore I haven't really researched it enough to find that. So I don't, I don't quite have one that would do that. Yeah, just plain old github.com. Yeah, that one's pretty advanced for most people. Don't worry about that one. But that's if you want to save your co your code online in a in a safe place. Question. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm still not clear on how to take the, the site if you're working on and, and put it onto our online. Okay, let me spend three more hours that's and then we'll good. be able, then we'll be able to get it done. Not to be glib, but it is it is much more than we have time for, but the, the concept is, that's what I'm trying to do in the handouts, I cannot show in these handouts. Log into GoDaddy, go to your file manager, do this, do that. I has, that has to assume someone's got GoDaddy. Then you don't have GoDaddy, you have Bluehost. You're perfectly happy with Bluehost. Then my instructions are not exactly then what you need on Bluehost. That's why I've got these general concepts. You need to create a database on your, ho on your host monster. You need to upload your files into host monster, and then you run the installer. Yes, that does omit a lot of steps in the middle, but you know if you have these steps here and you call the tech support and say, my instructions say to create a database, help me, they will tell you on the phone. My instructions say to upload my files to the server, how do I do that? They will tell you on tech support. Any other general questions? How long do you keep your videos online? I don't move them out, so they'll be there until YouTube goes down. So you can go back and keep watching these as soon as, as after the class is over. Well, everyone, that's it for the moment. Uh, hopefully, you've learned a thing or two, and there's still more to learn. Take a class again, explore on your own, hire a professional, and I'll see you in the future, perhaps.